And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good brothers here in the temple. We have the man taking over all of your anime and guiding you to and guiding you to your VTubers. Some some of them shorter than others. Good good brother Shades. And we have the and we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. It is August eighth, the cra the crazy eights of the of the year of our of the year of our lo our Lord two thousand and twenty one. How the fuck we doing tonight? <laughs> crazy shit with me this week, but uh, I can't go into too much detail on that. I am at once amazed at the timeline we're on, and I still find all the cursed parts. So I just bring them to you, Monk, because I know it makes you cringe. <laughs> what, what the hell are you talking about? I, I, this year, this year has been this year has been a gr this year has been a great timeline for me because I I did not think that in the same year I would get to see new shit from Halloween, Iron Maiden, and later this year Dream Theater. Ah, uh, yes. That hey. announcement has made me very happy. However, Monk, I present to you the flip side of that coin. Bite Labs, the place where you can literally eat celebrity meat. What? Um. <laughs> it's a website where they take biopsies from celebrities and grow meat samples from them to make artisanal salami. <laughs> and now, the rest of you among the Geek Watch, I've all been cursed with the same information. Uh, you're welcome. Monk? May I? Please. Zen? Dave! You might deserve that. I regret nothing. Was that his first Dave? No, that's like my fourth. <laughs> All right, just making sure. But... You better pray I never find you in real life, Xan, or you're a dead man. <laughs> Bring it. I have plenty of sandbags and 9mm ammo. <laughs> I have my wife. That's enough for me. Um, Rails. And Anyway, <laughs> yeah. so this particular epi episode of Geek Watch was, was one of the... Originally, the topic was going to be was going to be something else, but after a after a bit of inspiration, because as you, as you know, the muse is very thick is a very fickle mistress. Um, I ended I ended up get I ended up getting I ended up getting struck with in, with a moment of inspiration, and yes, some of it is due to the fact that the cages that hold my inner troll were rattle were rattling, but. So, so um, I had unfortunately sat through Masters of the Universe Revelation season one. Although it's although is it really a, although is it really a season when you do the whole split it in half thing, which for the record yeah. I really don't like. First, first core as they call it over in the anime world. Yeah, and it's handled at least a little bit better there. But even then, I'm still not a big fan of that idea. I think it's stupid. Just give us all twenty four to twenty six episodes, please. Um. I don't. I I will say I will say this: splitting splitting a anime into sets of twelve doesn't piss me off as much as splitting a as splitting a cartoon into sets of five or ten. It's already shortened and truncated, and they just truncated it further. Yeah, although I'm That's... not sure. If, I'm not sure what pisses me off more: that kind of thing or. Renewing something for a second season when its first season hasn't even aired yet. Uh. Can I can I root can I root for the nuke? <laughs> I mean, you In can always. Case... GPO two is just down the hall. Fair en fair enough, but. <laughs> Now, initially, initially, uh, initially, this was going to be an episode dedicated to dedicated to, to um, 
to what to why revelation was it was a ste was a steaming pile and why and the um, long-term damage that it's that is going to do every time somebody says that um that they are that they're a fan of a given ip that they happen to be working on um a, ca a case in point a case in point when it comes to that Rob Zombie wants to do something, wants to do a Monsters reboot, and he says that he's the best person to do it because of how much of a fan he is, which I do not, I do not doubt his fandom for one minute. I mean, Dragula, anyone? Uh, yeah. But you know how you know how it is. Shit rolls downhill, and hey there, hey there, JT. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up? You're ju you're just you're just in time for the opening preamble. Oh, cool. Oh. Wanted to. I want. Uh, I saw Zan was on. Was gonna hit. Him, wanted to hit him up for something. Hit him up for something. But uh, yeah, let's get this started. Yeah. Um. But. Eh. But as I as I was thinking, as I was pondering it or meditating about it. And I know. I know. I was meditating, not napping. There is a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In one of them, he's not snoring. <laughs> I bar I barely snore as it is. Lucky Good you. for you. <laughs> <laughs> personal, I have a pers personal experience that this is somewhat true. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. But as as I was thinking about it, I I ended up at first at first the comparison I was going to make is the one that a lot of people had been making the two thousand the two thousand X reboot of He Man, um, which for the record is better in every conceivable way. But then I then I ended up think I ended up thinking that's a little bit too easy and everybody has done it by this point. Instead, the instead I ended up I ended up making the comparison to the final season of Samurai Jack. And after and after that, I started to I started to think about similar continuations, and that's when that's when the title for the, for this episode came. Although. I did have to shorten it a bit to meet the 100 character limit. Ladies and gentlemen, growing I call it growing with or against your audience. And the and um this is and because and when I asked um when I asked Shades to put together this particular setup, the the I we decided to go with two examples of growing with your audience and two examples of growing against your audience. The widths are, of, are um, Cobra Kai and Samurai Jack, obviously, and the against are Star Wars and He-Man. Mm. Um, now, I, pro I probably should set the stage in terms of what exactly I mean by this idea of growing up with your audience versus growing against your audience. The idea of growing with your audience is an under. And the reason I used all of these examples is because these are these are meant to be continuations of IPs with dedicated fan bases after a long drought of nothing going on with that IP. Mm. And the idea of growing with your audience is acknowledging that your that um your that a lot that a lot of things about storytelling and the like have have cha have changed the the your if you're going to be doing this, you're clearly going to be appealing to people who still were holding a flame for this kind of thing, and you and you have to you have to acknowledge that in some form or in some form or another, whether it be directly continuing on from story or or um, acknowledging that the that um you can't do the exact exact same kind of tone that you did in the past, and the whole acknowledging the acknowledging the past for what you're doing in the present which is something is something that we've kind of relaxed into if you look at a, at a fair at a fair few of our um reconstructions there's always the subtext of passing the torch some, yeah some are a little i'd say i'd say the i'd say the um, exception to this rule to to an extent is ingress but not, but it's, but it's not like it's not like it isn't present even even in that one. And the idea of growing against your audience is, base is basically what basically when you're tr when you're trying to do when you're trying to do a continuation 
but either either misun or misunderstand the fa the fans or think that you're better than the fans. Um, ultimately, it's 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 like it's like when a it's like when a parent says that, says that their food when the when the when the kid wants McDonald's and you and the parent says oh this oh this is better than McDonald's which sir on one on one hand that's um that's a bit of low it hanging might, fruit it might be <laughs> true <laughs> it might it, it might be it might be true but it, but i suppose a better example would be would be to say that some would be to say that someone that um someone's um homemade slop is be is better than at a restaurant. Mm. I real I realize bad and even that's not the best example because all four of us are no strangers when it comes to cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I should hope none of us are strangers to cooking. Yeah. Food is too good but to. But the, the general point is is that you know, I I guess the whole meme of I want this but we have this at home this at home is and them being shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's more, it's more of, it's more of when you're, when you're, it's more of when, so, when someone is trying to, when someone is trying to enthusiastically insist that something that clearly, clearly doesn't match up, clearly doesn't meet the standard is just as good, which, um, Zan, as a, as a fan of, as a fan of Brandon, you should be familiar with the wailing cry of the poors when it, or, um, Taurus apologists. <laughs> uh, when something is just as good, if you have to say it's just as good, it usually isn't. Yes, I know. Yeah, Brand Brandon Herrera, everybody, also known as the AK guy, mm -hmm. also known as the also known as the um, the shit the shit lord of the gun community. Ooh. I'm I'm sorry, but he's the only one actually designing a 50 BMG among his friends right now. So. uh yeah, I'm gonna get me an AK-50. <laughs> yeah, um, I do. I and I, I do appreciate that every that everybody decided to use the string method after, after that incident. Yeah, yeah. Scott's doing better now. Short, short version shades. Um, 50 BMG go boom. Oh, become shrapnel bomb. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And it was it wasn't a it wasn't a case of a dar of of a honorable mention Darwin Award because everything everything was done right. It was it was just a case of really bad luck. Fair enough. A round a round that was too hot and they couldn't have known it was too hot. Mm -hmm. But the now obvi obviously the obviously the idea of growing against your audience is. Of is some is something that is something that is run very is something that is run very rampant in Hollywood these days. What with all the with all the bad rem remakes, reimaginings, and what have you. We're subverting your expectations, cause it, that's what it's about, right? No, what it actually is about is that the, whoever's creating this newer project has decided they want to use the medium to tell their own story, even if it doesn't. It goes pretty much against the majority of what the original was about. Mm -hmm. A story, that, a story that I always that I always bring up when it comes to these kind of things is, is that of Harv Bennett, who, I who I and I've told this I've told this story in the past. Harv, um, did was not a was not a fan of Star Trek when he when he was assigned the role of of lead producer for Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan, but. In order to understand what he was getting himself into, he ended up marathoning the ori the original series in its entirety and took notes. And and it led to a very fantastic Star Wars mm -hmm. or Star Trek movie. Pardon yeah. me. Brain is not braining all the way today. And <laughs> notes. Even though he, even though he, even though he ended up pissing off a good chunk of the fan base and Gene when it came to so when it came to some of the things that got leaked cares about pissing off gene the man couldn't uh the man couldn't come to terms with the fact that his utopia was nonsensical and self-contradictory the, the <laughs> general rails. thing that happened with this movie is that you know one thing we want to make clear having a little creative liberty 
is not a problem. Mm -hmm. You can make a few changes. You can add your own artistic vision to whatever you make. The problem come the, the the thing is is that when you're making something that's based on an established franchise, you have to make sure you understand the soul of that franchise, not just the elements of it, the soul of it. Yes. What is it truly about? That if you can capture that, then whatever you make is going to be a hit. Um, there also seems to be this this idea this idea that um, that. You could, that you that it's imp that it's impossible that when it comes to the fan base, they're always they're always going to be mad at they're always going to be mad at you no matter what you do. So fu so fuck them. Um, truth truth is, fans are a lot are a lot more forgiving than people think. As long as long as there's an understanding that you have their interests at their interests at heart. When you believe yourself above them, they're going to notice and they're going to say fuck you back. Yeah. And when it when it comes to the when it comes to the the this idea this idea that they that you have to work that you have to work against the fans it's it is it is very much something that can that can only be born when you're when you're not um when you're not in t when you're not in touch with them no matter how much someone claims to be a fan um and again and again. Again, the the idea of 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 needing to of needing to be a fan that that can be a that can be a double edged sword. And I and I can think of one particular example of the of the um je, of the jagged end of that of that double edged sword that's relevant to your interests, Shades. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Zacker, wanted for crime. <laughs> Um, I do I do not doubt of Super Sentai. However, he was he was someone who was who was very much blinded by his by his own fandom. And um and one would one would think I one would think I'd be bring I'd use this to bring up what happened with Samurai. No, I'm going I'm going a step further. I'm going. I'm going to bring up some of the some of the stuff that he did during Wild Force. Bringing it, bringing yeah. in, bringing in, bringing in um, Japanese representatives from Gal Ranger. On paper, something like that sounds like it'd be a good idea to kind of represent it. But the thing is, is that even by that point already, Power Rangers had involved had already evolved into something way beyond just being a Super Sentai adaptation. It had become its own thing. So to try to make it closer to the Sentai when that honestly didn't fit caused a lot of problems. And most especially, the one of the biggest problems with Wild Force, the dialogue got stiff. A lot of a lot of that has to, a lot of that has to do with the um, with the inflective patterns of Japanese versus English. Those those kind of pauses work perfectly fine and work perfectly fine in Japanese. But that, but English does not English does not have that um that vocal pattern. But I think I think ten Nick. I think ten gets a gets a um gets a clean break on this kind of thing because. It was the, it was their first attempt to actually use voice acting. Yeah, they kind of hadn't quite figured out how to make it work, so it all it ends up being is cheesy at times, but it never comes off as just offensive. Yeah, and let's not forget, while an English Titus just sounds like a clown, Japanese Titus sounds like a crow when he laughs. Yeah, <laughs> but to. To get back to Jonathan Zacker for a minute, one of the element things I want to bring up is uh, this goes back to the elements. Mm -hmm. Because what Jonathan Zacker introduced into Power Rangers, and this was especially prevalent in Samurai and a little bit in Mega Force too, was he brought in the, the elements of the original Sentai, but he never captured the soul of it. Mm -hmm. And this was most prevalent in Samurai. As, as we were alluding to earlier. 
Samurai being a complete cup and cut, copy and paste. Unfortunately, it left a lot of the elements of what made uh, Shinkenger work. Which, you know, it. Sorry. It, which is is amusing because I, rem I remember I remember being part of discussions around that time, and a lot of people were fairly against the idea of samurai get samurai being that being the next bit of stock footage used. Yeah, the main thing problem with it is that it, Shinkenger was so. Japanese in its design from the ground to the top that trying to adapt that for an American audience would have been it was impossible and well the results speak for themselves on that regard mm -hmm. you could have adapted it for a, for a western audience you just have to turn it into a spaghetti western <laughs> <laughs> that might have worked but that even that would have been a stretch but like mm -hmm. that's the thing though it's like it was so like it wasn't just the designs. It wasn't just the the the, uh, the props used. It was every aspect of it, the culture, the the, tra the tradition, the the mentality of what Shinkinger was about. Trying to cut, copy, and paste that was the worst thing they could have done because the whole you know honoring a leader and you know having that kind of whole just mentality of how they acted. When again goes against everything we in America act uh, consider to be, you know, how we act. That yeah, just doesn't work here. Yeah, the American spirit has never been lords and vassals or lords and their retainers. The entire reason the American Revolution occurred was to get away from that. Yeah. So to try to bring that into Power Rangers was nonsensical at best, and. It showed when you see how everyone acts. Like, they tried to do... they. This was a case of Jonathan Shacker trying to have his cake and eat it, too, and it clearly did not work. Um, I, don't I don't want to dwell too much on the Neo Saban era, because I do, I do want to... Um, That's its own thing. I, I, do want, yeah. I, do want to dedicate an, I do want to dedicate an episode later to it. But speaking on the, but speaking on the theme of, of growing against your audience... <laughs> Sorry, carbonation. <laughs> consider, consider this: when it when it was when it was announced that uh, that that uh, that Power Rangers was coming back after after being essentially soft canceled after RPM, and the and the and the rights were going were going back to Saban, I saw a lot of people, um, especially especially the lapsed fans who. May have, who may have who may have only had a nostalgic re remembrance of the Zordon era, um, ha g completely unironically go, yes it yes it's ba it's back like it used to be no it's back like it used to be it'll be it, it'll be good now. Um, <laughs> as as someone okay so as someone who technically falls into that range of people you're talking about, I fell out with Power Rangers right around. The end of Zio. I, I caught a little bit of of like Lost Galaxy and In Space and such here and there, um, but I also caught things like SPD. Uh, when I heard it was coming back to Saban and coming back, my reaction was more. But why? I was one of those that dabbled in the Disney era. I what I jumped. I watched a little bit and then just. Storm. I really got invested when Dino Thunder came out because I was that kind of fanboy and I actually still had respect for JDF at the time. So him coming back was like, oh my god. And it was a good series, so I'm not, uh, you know, not a regret there. It was, it was and definitely then, a good series and I like how they built off of Abba Danger with it. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, SPD happened and I kind of started falling out even though I kind of regret that one I do kind of regret because SPD was also a good season. Mm -hmm. I kind of started falling out about that point. <laughs> Yeah, but I, you know, especially since I had a harder time watching it because of how, how it was getting shifted around. Especially, but I, I, it w I wish it was easier to watch RPM when it finally dropped. But ugh, yeah, good luck. But that being said, when I heard Saban was getting the rights back, I was intrigued. But I also was like, well, let's see how this plays out. And uh, <laughs> yeah, but kind of. The key, the key thing that I want to focus on, is 
a lot of what they were really tr what they were trying to do was tr was trying to was trying to replicate um season season 1 MMP MMPR when really it wasn't until season 2 that that an identity really started to form with the, with that with that run and uh, and a lot of a lot of that had to do with the fact that they were essentially not they were, they were be, they were trying to be less and less dependent on using stock footage yeah, I th the p problem with this is that, like this doesn't even really fit with uh, the topic of today because that's not so much growing. That was regressing. That was them trying to regress to try to reach that zeitgeist that, that MMPR season one had. That was what they were trying to do. They're like MMPR season one was when we were at our highest because it was the big moment where we were like everyone was talking about. It. We need to get to that again, mm -hmm. not realizing that that was just a fluke, and the only reason it kept going is because they learned to evolve with it. So yes. by trying to go back, you end up kind of fucking things up. I wanted to bring it up here because it's one f it's one form of growing against your audience. It's not the it's not the most common form of growing against your audience, but it is a f but it is a form that takes place. Now the Fair most enough. common the most common forms of growing against your audience you can look for in in places like EA and Activision Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it comes... And when it comes to now, of course, the most co the most common version is the is the whole um sub is the whole subvert is the whole subversion thing. But the thing um it is it is a bit unfortunate that the term subverting your expectations has now but has now become toxic. Simply because yeah. as, as somebody as somebody who I didn't. I didn't grow up with. The, I didn't grow up with the Twilight Zone. I did grow up the, with the Night Gallery, and then later on, I grew up with the, um, with the reboot of the Outer Limits. I yes. Was, um, we the, control the, your the horizontal idea, and the vertical. The idea of um, of a ma of a massive twist, or 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 th or things not being as they appear is cer is certainly appealing to me, and I've already I've already talked about how much Memento is one of my favorite movies. Where the, and and subvert and subversion is one of the key things that that thing does. Period. Yes. The now, I think I think the way you can differentiate is when a piece of art actually does undergo that transformative spin mm -hmm. that does manage to surprise you, astound you, whatever it may do. It usually does not tout that as its primary or one of the primary features mm -hmm. of its art. It usually says other things in its synopses or gets other things in its promotional material that engage you so that eventually when you get to that transformative point, it catches you. And that's what makes it most powerful. I think the only time we see subverting your expectations as a danger rather than as a as a proper usage of the tools within the, the whatever medium it is is when that is one of the forerunner quote unquote presented as promotional material when someone says this show is going to subvert your expectations it is at that point that the the nugget of distrust begins to roll downhill and collect all the shit with it Especially reminding you <laughs> especially since you're, especially since it's a, it it ends up putting the question in the audience's mind well if 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 what if what I'm, if what I'm going to be invested in for a time is going to turn is going to turn out to be bullshit why should I be invested exactly exactly yeah um whereas there the whereas when when I think when I think of subversions and in, in when I think of subversions or twists um the the one the one major example and it's an exa it's an example that um that get that gets that definitely has its holes upon 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 deeper inspection and Zan I'm pr I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure you have a bit of an idea on where I'm going with this pretty I sure need, yeah. I need to bring up Spec Ops again oh God now yes upon, when you look when you look deeply into into the white phosphorus incident there are certainly some holes and Jaeger has out has ad, has admitted that th that um th that they could have done some things better but 
that per that particular moment was not was not in any promotional material. As far as far as and I looked I looked through a lot of it I looked through a lot of interviews just to double check. For all intents and purposes, they simply state that they are trying to do a they were trying to do a mil a military shooter heavily inspired by the Heart of Darkness. So Which is an interesting thing to be inspired by as a military shooter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's oh, it certainly is. And um, at the very at the very least, they had a less they had a less chaotic adaptation of that of that story than say Apocalypse Now did. <laughs> like, I would I would say that you could I would say that you could do that you could do an entire movie on the development of that, but somebody did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You mean Apocalypse Now? No, I'm, I'm saying somebody did a documentary on the making of Apocalypse Now because it's such a shit show. Also true. But I'd say I'd say a mate I'd say I'd say a mate I'd say a major it a major um warning warning sign when it comes to this idea of subverting and gr and growing against your audience is it's ve it's very clear that a lot of that a lot of the people who have that mentality do not have a do not are not willing to subject themselves to the to the humbling of of what of what makes a work special um or what what makes what makes it something that a fan base would would gravitate around they see and instead see instead see it as something beneath them um just to just to you just to use an example when it com when it comes to this kind of thing I um I I realize I realize that they're a very easy target these days, but I'd like to bring up Bioware. Uh. <sighs> the reason the reason being is for a, for a good amount of time, I kept asking myself, is Bioware embarrassed of their RPG roots? No. No, I I can I can safely say that Bioware is not embarrassed of their RPG roots. <clears throat> Grab a Bioware, I feel a butt coming. No, <laughs> this is not. This is not a butt. This is a what Bioware is embarrassed of. Bioware is embarrassed of the fact that nobody could grasp their grand artistry. Which. That's that's the that's the other that's the other thing, and um, this is the this is the reason why I, why um I like a certain phrase that jo that Joel has, that Joel has used when we when we've had him on. You make elf games, because you ever notice that a lot of a lot of the people who have who have this idea that that um that th that they're making that they're making the true vision or or some similar gobbledygook, they they see th they see themselves as artistes. In some, mm -hmm. in some in some manner of in some in some form or shape or that they're somehow ele they're somehow elevating the me the medium from a from a from a toy to an art form looking at I am looking directly at you yeek mr uh, mr I want I want to make it I want to make a I want to make a I want to make a serious game with a with using some IRL things that was in bad taste, and then and then bitching to Dick Masterson about it when you yeah. got pushback, and then of course there's the fact that he says the main character is deliberately designed to be a terrible person. I mean, if by terrible you mean boring, then yes, but that's neither here nor there. With the the mm -hmm. going back to Bioware, yeah, the the impression. I got was that the acquisition by EA started to get to their heads. They, prior to that, were a smaller studio that made some really successful RPGs. Mm -hmm. And they were really proud of those RPGs, were glad that the fans enjoyed them. The EA acquisition comes along and they start thinking, wow, we're really big. We're actually much bigger than we thought. And 
to some people, I'm almost sure that went to their head and they thought they could do no wrong. Um, we really start to see this change around the same time the sequel games for some of their most popular RPGs, Mass Effect and Dragon Age, start coming out with simplified systems of play and more meme-like dialogue. I would say proto-Gearbox, uh, Borderlands 2 type meme, uh, meme, meme speech in both those places, though not nearly as far as Borderlands and Borderlands 2 went with it. It was more meme speech you would expect from era. More, more of um. Okay, okay. I'm get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get some shit for for bringing this up. But I'm, but whenever I see things that are that are directly trying to be memes, I call them Schwifties. Eh, <laughs> yeah. eh. You'll get hate from the people who think that Rick and Morty was always bad. No, but with with Bioware, the. When EA started really pushing influence into games, because Mass Effect 2 was very much like an EA shooter of the time, and Dragon Age 2 was very much like an action game that EA's many subsidiaries were responsible for, um, it, it definitely showed that they allowed that to happen because... We've been acquired by EA. We're at we're the big leagues now. Clearly, they know how things should go in the big leagues. And as they got more and more fan pushback on these points, uh, the, the idea of listen to the fans because we're a small studio was gone. It was, what do you know? We're part of EA. We're a big studio now. We know how the games should be made, not you. And it, it was never more evident than when everything blew up in their face because of the original non-extended cut endings of Mass Effect 3. Mm -hmm. When we got that letter from one of the two, I think it was one of the two co-founders, who basically just called us all entitled chads. And that, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's the other thing. Um when it com when it comes to when it comes to this audience relationship of pe of people believing that the that the fan base are unwashed masses that they that it is their it is their duty from on high to elevate well yeah uh, i remember for a longest time when i was much younger and arguing against this stuff i used to say that we're not entitled my my mindset changed abruptly one day when i realized something we pay them fucking money. We're damn right entitled. <laughs> We're entitled to that fucking shit. You expect us to pay money for a product. We expect a good product in return. That's how supply and fucking demand works. So you bet your fucking ass I'm entitled. <laughs> and actually, no, I agree with uh, Zan on this one. It's like, yeah, you know, we don't expect it to be exactly as we ourselves want it. We just expect it to be something enjoyable. If you can't even deliver us that, why the hell should we be paying you? Um, something that comes something that comes to mind when it when it comes to when it comes to that kind of thing is, does anybody remember that that really that really sh that really shitty interview that ran that Randy Pitchford that Randy Pitchford did where he tried to where he tried to claim that, um, the that the that the alien that the alien fan base um, had put had that had this grand idea on what the game was going to be in their head. Which... I vaguely remember that interview. I at that point, Gearbox was and and Randy Pitchford were so far behind me, I couldn't have given less of a shit at the time. <laughs> I mainly ga I mainly gave a shit about the interview because I wanted I wanted to see how he was going to argue it. I mean, he argued the same argument de jour of that time, entitled piss babies. Hmm. That's the, that is that is the argument de jour that has been around since the Goober de Gook. Yes, and when it when it comes to when it comes. Furthermore, when it when it comes to the, when it comes to the idea of of 
of gr of growing of growing against your audience. Um, a lot of the the key thing that I always keep coming back to is a lack of humility. Um, this uh, this uh, this idea this idea that it's the difference between someone aware that they are standing on the shoulders of giants versus someone who thinks that they are the giants. Um, this is again the the reason I brought up EA and Activision Blizzard earlier. Um, because, uh, you know, we have perfect comparisons within, uh, the visual media, you know, cartoons of Samurai Jack growing with, but, you know, He-Man Resurrection growing against, or Revolution, or whatever it was called. Revolution. That one, yes. Starts with an R, means something that was pretentious as shit, and, uh, please, Kevin Smith, stop sniffing your own farts. <clears throat> uh, also, also, um, Crocodile Tears. That too, yeah. Um, but a, a, as a parallel to that comparison of what is admittedly now an older, an older ending, the fifth, the fifth season of of a uh, Samurai Jack ended what two, three years ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but and what this Masters of the Universe Revelations is now, we can instead also look to the exodus from WoW to FF14. And uh, as, as much as people may have whatever opinion they do of him, Asmongold is the litmus test. One of the longest standing uh, WoW streamers there was. Mm -hmm. Goes over to FF14, has uh, the time of his fucking life. I've watched some of his highlight reels, and oh man... I remember the feelings he's feeling on these missions because I fucking had them when I played the game. <laughs> um, and it's it's very evident. Wow, Activision Blizzard, they don't listen to the fans anymore. They don't care. Whereas you FF14... Know what, you want to know what the canary in the coal mine when it came to that was? What's that? The Nostalrius incident. Ah, uh, yeah, the Nostalrius uh a private server, or that was for older versions, and they were all like, "Nope, you got to shut it down now." And it and it it wasn't it wasn't until seventy six thousand signatures got delivered by got delivered by by um, Mark that they that they ended that they ended up thinking, "Okay, we'll do this classic thing," which and, sucks. And the I think the I think the and that and that was simply because of the fact that they publicly pants themselves with that whole you don't want that you think you do but you don't you have phones don't you mm -hmm. uh, i was about to say yeah this is <laughs> activision blizzard's had a very bad run of constantly saying shit like this you think their fan they think they know their fans and then it blows up in their fucking face yeah, yeah. but then and then we have square who didn't listen during FF14 1.x and realized that not listening was not working. Uh, when they invited Yoshi P in, at first he was like, okay, we'll see if we can bring this up to, to standard. And then Yoshi P comes to the realization, there's no fucking way we can recover from this. And he's like, uh, I need permission to blow this all up and yeah. build from new. And Square was like, are you insane? I'm like, we're already at rock bottom. Our fans just want a fun MMO. Let me do this, and I guarantee you we will, be, we will recover. And they did. He listened to fan input from the time he was working on 1.x. Mm -hmm. He listened to fan input even while they were now developing 2. Uh, two. And the Realm Reborn comes out, and FF14 becomes one of the most popular MMOs in the world. <laughs> let's, all, let's also not forget that all all of the hi, all the higher ups involved with um, 1.0 went on, went on the grand apology tour. Oh, I remember yeah. those? I remember those press conferences. I remember when it was a public apology from Square Enix to uh, so because they they fucked the game that bad. I was astounded to see that that, that press conference. I was like, "Yo, people don't do this anymore." Companies don't apologize for fucking up. They just tell you that you fucked it up and it's not their fault. The on Get the on only, them. The only other major instance I can think of that kind of thing is when Iwata voluntarily took a 
took a pay cut even when he didn't have to because of how badly the Wii U turned out. Exactly. Mm. It, it, it's a it, you know it's funny that Japan just keeps seems to get this right because they've learned from their own mistakes on this. You know, at least in for the most part they have. Obviously, yep. there are still some outliers. Mm -hmm. But the general idea is is like listen, we don't none of us as fans expect any company to bend over backwards to cur to, to, to kowtow to every single demand we make. That's insane. No company should ever do that. But when it comes down to the bare basics, if the majority of the fan of the majority of people talking about the game, especially those who are actually playing it or watching it in the case of a series, if they're telling you this isn't good, you might want to listen. And to use an, to use another example of this of this gro of this growing with growing with your audience kind of thing, um, I want I want to I want to point in the direction of. 343 Industries, who I have been very harsh on in the past. But I, um, I had, I've, I had watched through, I had watched through my fair share of streams, and I've, I've seen what they're doing regarding Halo Infinite. And they are be, even the, despite, despite how, despite how much of a botched job Guardians was, it is very clear that they are, that they are listening to people. They didn't even call the um the multiplayer the multiplayer um what they what they called a tech preview not an alpha a tech preview, um, actually actually feels like what like what people expect from an alpha or a or a beta instead of the glorified de instead of the glorified demo that we've been accustomed to. And. Because 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 of the fact that they are going out of, the, out of their way, including br including bringing back some old fr some old friends, <laughs> to because because all hail Staten. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's been the face of Halo for years. Mm -hmm. But there but there is but again it goes it goes back to that whole to that whole thing of. You have you have to you have to give enough of a presentation so so that people can believe that you ha that you have their interests because I would I would say I would say one of the one of the greatest curses that you can put that you can put an IP on is saying that you're trying to appeal to a wider audience. <laughs> first, and that first off, the wider audience is about as real as as unicorns, Santa Claus. And truthful lawyers, and that actually brings me to an example of what many people thought was growing against uh, your audience. Guilty Gear Strive. There were a lot of things that were changed in Guilty Gear Strive that uh, aren't so kosher for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, not the least of which being the removal of things like Tibet and Taiwan from the data, the data logs. Because of the fact that the thing has to be sold in China, I have a I have a very very big suspicion that this is not something Arxis wanted, and it was actually something one of the platforms they publish on requested and demanded. Mm -hmm. um, but then there was the controversy of costume changes, um, and that I that I went through in Microcosm inside the monastery with one of our good brothers, Homer. Mm -hmm. um, where? Sorry to pick on you, Homer, but this is how it works. Everybody, <laughs> I hold these Eno... to be self-evident. All men are cremated equal. Indeed. <laughs> but people were complaining about a poorly translated uh, part of a Famitsu interview with Daisuke Ishiwatari. And he had said that Eno's costume had been changed, in, uh, in and something about uh, global appeal. And the, the 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 poor translated translation made it sound like self censorship. But I did the comparison. I pulled the I pulled the pictures of both costumes mm -hmm. side by side. The the new Eno costume. Shows more skin, not less. <laughs> and I found the Famitsu article itself, or at least an excerpt from it on someone's Japanese blog, and ran it through DeepL, uh, 
Side note, everybody, DeepL is a much better machine translator than Google Translate. I recommend it for everybody. Um, the DeepL translation showed that what he was saying was that this would increase global fan appeal. It was a polite way to say he was increasing the fucking fan service. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and so and so there were the grogs and the people who didn't understand what was going on and also didn't bother to do the investigation. They were like, oh, Arxis is going the way of the woke. And I was like, no. You're this wrong. Is, this is this is what this is why I've this is why I've always I've always told people to exercise caution and and um don't be and don't be don't be so quick to to ju to jump on, to jump on on something in the heat of the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be reactionary and bandwagoning. Mm -hmm. It always backfires on you. Now, yep. Going going for going further in, going further into. When it, going further into the whole um, to the whole idea of of growing with, I do want to I do want to focus on on the example of on the example of Samurai Jack for one for one thing in particular. Now, the final first off, the final season is something that I that I think a lot of us at the time didn't even think was go, was going to be a thing. We just re, we just resigned. We were just resigned to the idea that the story was never going to finish. And then it was a Mack truck to the face of happiness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah up, but prior to that season being announced, I think the official canon ending was in a video game that was not very good. Well, it's it's a it was a vid, it was a video game adaptation of 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 a of a at the time cartoon. You know how this works. Yeah. Oh. Not every not every not every video game adaptation can be SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. <laughs> but. When, but when, when it came to, when it came to the story itself, as an acknowledgement of the fact that the audience that the audience is not this is significantly older because the main people who are going to watch this are people who grew up with the source material. You had a, you had a much you had a much darker tone, and 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 also also some also a means of being able to contrast um, Jack. By ha by having a character look at him through the through the outside, and yeah. plus they even exp one of the other things they did that I think really helped kind of show that they didn't ignore the fact that it had been several years. They made that part of the storyline of the final season that he had been wandering through this wasteland of a, a po of a world for for all that time, and it it broke him. The final straw was the was the was the loss of the sword. Yeah, and and not only did that break him, he he started he started needing sand checks because of that. Exactly, the kind of stuff that <laughs> probably would have given me nightmares as a kid. <laughs> sand checks because you lost your dad's sword. Nah. <laughs> and the only and the only thing in the universe that the only thing on, on the planet and po and possibly in the universe that can ha that can harm a coup. Not to mention one of the only ties he had to his past lo to the past. So it was like that all he had left, and now that's gone. It's like what is it, what is he gonna do? The uh, the other thing that certainly didn't that certainly didn't help this particular thing, and I'm actually glad that this was never explained. He, even even after even after fifty even after fifty years, he hadn't aged. Please took that to mean that he was uh, semi immortal. That the magic of the, of both the time of the time travel and of the sword and everything else just kind of made him ageless. Mm -hmm. um, at the very least, it gave us one of the it gave us the template for one of the greatest Keanu Reeves memes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you mean the one that's been around since the 1400s? Oh, I mean, I mean I'm sorry, the 700s. <laughs> but he hasn't even aged. I mean, like, at all. He just grew that stupid beard. It feels <laughs> like we'll be here forever. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can't, I can't do Baldwin, and I sure as hell can't do Mako. Oh, I think the guy who tried to do Mako 
barely pulled it off. He did. Baldwin does the best that he can. I Baldwin can't. did very good as Iro. I'm sorry. The rails. Yeah. But when but um the other the the other the other the other. I want to. I want to. When it comes to the whole growing with your audience, I want to speak on the on the concept of fan service. Um. Because now, obvi- obviously, obviously, a lot of people have the idea that fan service is TNA. <laughs> um, no. But so there, are, there are two. There are two ways to use. There are two ways to use the concept of fan service. When you use. And I'd say the ro- I'd say the wrong way to use it is to just have it there, because when you do that, it um it feels it feels like someone condescending in the manner of jingling the keys. It's like, oh, remember this? Remember this? Yeah, this is what you like, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, again, to go back to to Guilty Gear Strive, Eno is a vamp and a vamp of a witch, literally. Mm-hmm. Um, her getting a a even flashier outfit. It's her character as well, so it wasn't just yeah. oh yeah, we're giving her more TNA to give more TNA because they took TNA from a uh, from Milia for story reasons as well. That made sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, we're not just talking about the TNA kind of fan service. We're also oh, talking about referential fan service. It's like oh, oh, remember this? Yeah, but you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But yeah, when you do it in just the sake of referencing it, all you end up doing is reminding us of that older, much better thing that we actually want. Yeah, I'd say I'd say I'd say a I'd say a big a big example of the of this kind of thing. What is um? Well, I hate I hate to pick on Neil Saban, but there's one other thing I need to bring up regarding this. Oh no, Spike. Uh... <laughs> The the att- the attempt to redo to redo the true heroes of the Saban era through the returning bulk and Spike. Now, what on the on the bu- and I I um I have I have gone I have gone back and forth like a pendulum figuring out which one of the which one of the two I hated more during that run. Um. Whether it whether it be whether it be bulk regressing from all the character growth that he that he had over over the Zordon era, or or Spike being Spike, it's a toss up. That's for sure. <laughs> I think I think I think uh I think that b- bulk's regression makes sense in the context we made earlier of them trying to grasp the lightning of the, in the bottle of well, of bulk, early MMPR. Well, bulk and spike in the, in this regard are trying to re, are trying to redo the whole bulk and skull thing. And it, yes, but it what I'm what I'm saying is bulk's regression makes sense if you're trying to reference an earlier bulk. Mm-hmm. Spike is the more egregious one. Yeah, cuz even with the regression that they gave Bulk still had some shades, some minute semblance of his character growth still there. He was a lot less bu- less of a bully. He was more heroic in tone. He was trying to teach Spike how to be a hero, even if he was doing it very, very poorly. So there was still something there. But mm-hmm. Spike! Oh. It feels like a master class. Remember... remember- That, that that thing you just said about referential rem- reminding us of the thing that we had when we really just want more of that thing now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Spike's whole missing the point thing is essentially that because all he does is remind of remind us of his dad's goal. And uh yeah. well as we nice want as, Skull. We don't want Spike. As nice as it was to see, to see Skull at the, to see Skull at the end and with a very Neither, neither of you have, with the whole "you haven't changed at all," you haven't changed at all kind of gag. Um, wasn't wor- well, the setup didn't make the payoff worth it. 
No, it didn't. And here's the other problem with this whole aspect, and this is the last I'll bring up on this before we don't go too far off the rails, but mm. another reason why this didn't work is it was a last-minute change. They just threw that in there, and you can tell this because they were so late in adding them into the, into the show that they weren't even able to film half the scenes with the Rangers themselves. It wasn't until, like, halfway into the second season that they finally had some interaction. Mm-hmm. But, but um, when but I'd say I'd say I'd say another I'd say another another major aspect when it comes to when it comes to growing when it comes to growing against the audience and this is where I ha this is where I have to bring in the the whole thing with um the whole the whole thing with Re with revelation and other matters is there were there were some is the fact that. Look, fans are go fans are going to have an encyclopedic knowledge of the lore of their fandom, and they and they are going they're going to be able to smell inconsistencies from a mile away. In now, I I would I would put in a I would put in a spoiler warning for this kind of thing, but can you really spoil what's already rotten? <laughs> So, At this point, Monk, I don't think any of us fucking care, and anybody watching our show probably doesn't fucking care either. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a principle thing, you know. I know, but um, as you just said, can you spoil what's already rotten? So the whole the whole idea of the of the destruct the destruction and division of the power sword is is what was causing magic to leak out and of and would eventually destroy Eternia. Except, did they did they forget did they forget that there's always been two power swords? Yeah. <laughs> um, and that wasn't that wasn't the only bit of inconsistency that was that was brought that was brought up. The other one being, um, Orko claiming claiming that he's claiming that he sucks as a magician. Even though the reason his magic ends up going out of whack is because he's not from around those parts. Tr um. Because, because in his homeland of Trala, he was actually a badass. It's just, um, the way Eternia works messes with his magic. Different magic laws of physics in different realities. Mm -hmm. See, here, here's the thing: a minor inconsistency, a minor slip up here and there. Most fans are going to forgive it. Like most fans are like, okay, you know what? It's a little different, but hey, we'll chalk it up to creative liberty. But when you start really changing everything around and not understanding the original lore and why it worked, mm -hmm. that's when people start getting okay. You, you you fucked it up now. Nice job. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you can think of a few instances of of someone of someone coming in coming into a follow up and really really fucking that up. Oh, I can name an example right now. Shoot. One Punch Man season two. <laughs> I don't. I want to make clear. I don't hate JC staff, but they were out of their depth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why do we why... bring up more examples of the Bad House Curse? Why do you bring <laughs> me this pain? <laughs> because I had to suffer too. That that and beca that and because that because I had to I had to, I had to see a petition earlier this week where some people want um met, want Madhouse to tackle the rest of Tokyo Ghoul. Why? Like I love Madhouse, but but why? Yeah, and I, I basically said, wait, you're, wait, do you expect Madhouse to finish something? <laughs> it's not Madhouse's fault they never get a chance beyond Card Captor Sakura. I I know it's I know it's not their fault, but it but it but it is st it is still true, and believe me, their day will come. And and I am not I am not looking for I am not looking forward to that day because I love I love Madhouse's work. But yeah, you know what? I'll take I'll take that statement and I'll turn it into a positive one. You're right. One day their day will come and the curse will be broken. Well, we well we always we always thought that we that that the that the curse of dead female common writers would be eternal, but um, the Reiwa era has proven that wrong. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. but when it but when it comes to 
when it come but when it come when it comes to this when it, there's always there's always this idea some people have this idea that the that the slightest in, that the slightest inconsistency will um will will ca will cause people to go irate and that's where that infamous stop talking about plot holes video came about that just made me cringe Sim simply because um it was it was I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw that if you saw that video when it was making the rounds, but it was very clearly trying to straw man people's ideas of plot holes. Is trying trying to fill trying to fill every single plot hole in a given work, especially the more fantastical works, that's that's going to be an impossibility, and everybody knows this, especially especially with cer with some motifs more than others, like say time travel. Yeah. To, to quote to quote a bit to quote a certain man, time travel is bullshit. Should have asked. I have that button. <laughs> to quote a different meme, one having to do with fantasy in general. When you get a fantastic enough setting or idea, and you have plot holes, it's magic. I ain't got to explain shit. <laughs> Still I love that it. meme. I love the meme, but the game master in that show was a dick. Then again, yes, he was. Then again, then again, so am I when I'm DMing sometimes. So I guess it fits. <laughs> but is this a rare moment of self-reflection on his projection? Don't get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> also, to steal to steal a line from you, shades. Don't get penisy. <laughs> <laughs> But, Gotta bane your existence at least once per episode, Monk. Yes, yes, and and your and your services are, and and we appreciate your sacrifice. <laughs> but like when it come when uh, this is especially the case when when with certain IPs where there's an acknowledgement that there's never been that that there hasn't been a consistent that there hasn't been a consistent universal setup like say um, Star Wars or Doctor Who. But when you do when you do something when you do something that isn't that isn't thinking through the implications of it, that's what or or um cl or clear or clearly or clearly didn't or clearly were um we're tr we're trying to in we're trying to insert too much of your own ideas into something with with its own rules. Um, what you're essentially telling the audience is that you do is that you don't respect the time that they've invested as a fan. Which is which is what which is why um which is why I'm pretty sure for ge uh, up until for generations to come, um the name Chris Chibnall will be will be used as a curse word by Doctor Who fans until I'm dead. Uh, yeah. Also, ding dong, the bitch is dead. The big old bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yet, yes, I yes I was I was made aware of that that they're just going to be doing a few specials and then they're out and um, I get the feeling they're never coming back. <laughs> I feel bad for Jodie Whittaker because she didn't deserve that. I mean, for the most part, she didn't deserve that. She's a good actress. It's just Chibnall fucked it up so bad. Well, the only reason the the main reason that she was even involved is because Chibnall knew her from their work on Broadchurch. And yeah. A, and she and um appar apparently she apparently she made no she made no attempt to try to there's always been a degree of consistency when it comes to when it comes when it comes to accents with the character but she made no attempts to um to tr to try and work to try and work herself out of her yorkshire accent so some of some of it uh, some of it i don't put at her feet some of it i do Fair enough. Um, but the and of course, of course, um, of course, the, I did, I did see that long, long ass video that that one guy did about 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 that entire run. Or rather, I rather I listened to it like a podcast because the thing because the thing was like four hours long since it was going through every episode of both series. Jesus. Um, I'm just, I'm just. I appreciate the thoroughness, and I appreciate that that it, that it um tr that that it did the work for me. <laughs> um, 
then ag then again then again give, given the length of stuff of of our show or stuff like history of power rangers do i really have room to judge <laughs> but but to be fair talking about doctor who is also a very like talking about chicken Run and doctor who is another great example of growing against the audience mm -hmm. you know chibdo had this entire lore of doctor who laid out from the last several series at least from the start of the reboot, if not from the pre from the original series alone. Mm -hmm. And yet, he decided to upend everything for the sake of telling his own story, even if it went against everything that Doctor Who was about. I mean, do I even have to mention The Timeless Child? I think that episode alone shows how this fits, this this topic. Yeah. <laughs> um it was an it was another example of of something of something that I see as a bad habit among 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 bad writers, and over and we we talked about this a bit during the during the reconstruction stuff with both Korra and with um, Star and with the sequel Star Wars, a overemphasis on a character's origins. What I'm go what I, what I'm going to call the Donna Troy effect. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. As far as the reason why there were there's that bad habit where they've made way too many where writers ended up trying to um, top each other in terms of the in terms of having a bigger revelation for Donna Troy's origins because she didn't really have a pr a proper origin. Like whatever they, compensation there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they ended up going through three origins and then tried to stack up stack on a stack on a stack, <laughs> and. Instead of instead of focusing where instead of focusing on where she is, and it's not like um, there was a similar thing that happened with Power Girl, where they kept trying to they kept trying to um, put other origins, they kept trying to reboot her with other origin stories that didn't stick. Pick a lane and stick to it. And eventually, they just went with the whole alternate universe Supergirl, which is what it was from the. What it was from the get go, and and then just let and then just let that stick. Uh, but the the point of the the, the point that the point is when, when it comes to this is that when you tr when you put that much emphasis on the origin, you're putting emphasis on stuff that's essentially already happened, and it's much more difficult to get invested in what we've already what we've already seen come to pass. Yeah, we kind of already had this problem in Doctor Who already with t uh, the time of the Doctor, mm -hmm. where Clara had to jump through the history of the Doctor's life to try to, you know, because she got split through his timeline. Mm -hmm. But even then, it was handled a lot better because it was still about the current era. Mm -hmm. But with the Timeless Child, it was literally changed. the entire origin of the Doctor and Gallifrey as a whole for the sake of shock value. That was all that was about. That and the, that and the whole ev that and the that and the la the lamp shading for, we for weeks and months about how everything you know is about to change. Which um, writers don't use that don't use that sentence. I know you th I know you think that it builds up hype but all, th all that it does is just make people roll their eyes yeah, or scare the shit out of them. Like, oh god, you're gonna fuck up our character, aren't you? And because I'll put I'll put it like this: it is it even though all even though a lot of signs were pointing to it, it is it is a it is a genuine surprise when you realize you've been you when when the revelation comes that you've been, that this Revan guy that that he, everybody keeps talking about is you. Or or what or when um or 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 to use to use a to use a better example in Jade Empire when the per when your me when your mentor stab tr stabs you in the back and tries to kill you and actually succeeds at killing you and the thing the thing is with both of those it's a case of th there were there were hints right in front of you you just weren't seeing them. But they didn't. But they didn't. But they. But the the most blatant that happens is people talking about some 
some hidden flaw in your in your fighting style in Jade Empire that nobody can really figure out. Mm. Or that there's so, or that there's something off. And then the revelation comes that it that it was a weakness that your mentor put in solely so that he could be the one to exploit it. And it's like, okay, now I now I see how you got your name. That being the glorious <laughs> strategist. Yep. You know the you know the whole the whole um Zan the whole Xanatos Gambit or Keikaku Dori. Translation note: Keikaku means plan. <laughs> that joke will never die. <laughs> Not not as long not as long as people keep doing 4D chess in, in stories, including myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's a self omission there. Mm -hmm. Um, and you one would think one would think that's me making fun of how shit my writing was with writer. No, that's that's me poking fun at the enemy within campaign we did, <laughs> which was one of our better ones to be fair. But still, yeah, but. When it but when it comes to when it come, but I'd say I'd say um. When it comes to when it comes to growing ag growing against, the uh, when it comes to growing against the audience, the reason why we keep coming back to that whole subversion of ec that whole subversion or sh or shock surprise, is al is ultimately be is ultimately because, there's there's this uh, there's this I there's this idea that you need to sh you need to shake things up. In order to not be too predictable, um, trying to trying trying to go against predictability ends up becoming it really does. I I, I I honestly get sick of people wanting to avoid being predictable because that's not the problem. We expect some things to be pretty obvious. We expect some predictable moments. The problem with predictability comes when you make it so blatantly obvious that there's no longer a point in watching. Mm -hmm. Like, we all know that in the end, the good guy is going to win. That's as predictable as you can get. But we all accept that because we just we don't care about the ends. We want to see how do they get to that point. What twists are you going to throw in? Yeah. You know, if we or if we see a bad guy being uh, like trying to be secretive, but we all can tell it's them. That's still predictable, but it's like we want to see where this goes. You can do that and get away with it. The problem is when you make him so blatantly evil that it's a miracle nobody sees it, that's when we're like, okay, what the hell? Yeah. And when it, when it, when it comes to when it, com, when it comes to when it comes to trying to trying to do some sort of shock, it's um it's essentially the it's essentially the narrative equivalent of a jump scare. Yeah. And a jump scare will a jump scare will give will certainly give that um that short term adrenaline boost, but the problem is short term. The minute we stop to take any, the minute we take even a second to think about it, we're like, wait a minute, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And I'd say that I'd say that tr that um if you if you look at the if you look at the proper subversions, they're always. Always built up so that ev so that everything falls into place, and you just w you just weren't um, seeing everything with the right perspective. Actually, I can name an example of that. <laughs> an anime that I watched, uh, Angel Beats. Everything's set up right from the get go to make it to, to make you think the story is very obvious, but then little by little, you start to realize something else is going on. And by the time it starts to really reveal what the story is actually about, you look back and you're like, oh, shit, I should have thought about that. Mm -hmm. Like, the main character literally joins the uh, one, the, the the rebels simply because he got <clears throat> he got stabbed. And I'd say I'd say that. I'd say that a lot, that um one of the, one of the big um critical drinker whose whose work whose work I wholeheartedly recommend um presented a bit of a vicious cycle when it comes to ki when it comes to killing off IPs. The first step the first step and in that first step there's always there's always the promise of the, of this is for this is for the fans. And that and that and then um and then when the tr and then when the other shoe drops 
um, cl claiming claiming the fan claiming the um, try to throw the try to throw those same fans under the bus. Large and to me, a lot of a lot of the, a lot of the times when that's done, what it ends up sh what it ends up showing to me is a lack of confidence in one's own work. Because things, the reason why I brought up um, the Wrath of Khan earlier is you would think with you would think with the backlash that the idea of killing Spock, which everybody told him he couldn't do when hit, when his argument was, as long as it's done right, yeah, you can. And he and um, if he and to go through to go through with that, that takes a lot of balls. Yeah, it takes a lot of balls and it takes a lot of confidence to believe that in in the belief that I am I am so I am so assured that this is going to that we can make this work that I'm that I'm willing to stake my own reputation on it. A lot of the people who do the subversion of expectations, the big question that you have to ask is. Are they only doing that because because they felt that th because they feared their story would be rejected if they didn't? Yeah, that's what I mean by a, by a lack of confidence. Yeah, the Spock's death in Khan worked because everything leading up to it felt in character, fit with the story, and it made sense why he would do something like that. And hell, they even foreshadowed it with the line the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few they foreshadowed all of it and everything lined up to that moment so that when it happened yeah we're upset but we're upset the way they want us to be upset we're like oh god no not like you know mm -hmm. if it was done poorly would have been like you're gonna kill him off like that are you out of your mind um I'd say I'd say I'd say the example of of the latter in that case would be into darkness. Um, mm. largely largely because largely because well for one they undercut it by having a get by having a escape the river sticks free card lampshaded beforehand with the tribbles. And se and secondly, is is the fact is the fact that it. That the de that the death wasn't the wasn't a cl wasn't a climax, but more of another thing that happens, which is which is why I, which is why J.J. Abrams is the California role. He does he doesn't he doesn't have anything move. He just has things happen. And when and I'd um if I if I can go with a bit more of a weeb example when it comes to the idea of a sub of a surprise death of a surprise death that works. Um I'm going to go with Mommy. Yeah. Cuz because <laughs> as someone who just reviewed the series not that long ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, when, up until that point Monica Magica just seemed like a typical, you know, it, you could tell something was off, but it didn't feel like it was that much different from any other Magical Girl series. Up until that moment, then you're like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. And the series following that moment does everything it can to make to make show that that moment needed to happen, mm -hmm. because it then shows that this is not the happy-go-lucky world you thought it was going to be. Now we're gonna start to show you how dark this shit gets. That was just the tip of the iceberg. There was also the fact that that up until that point they were very clearly setting up a character like Mommy as the as the equivalent of a mentor figure. Yes. Where where it where in a normal situation she'd be the person gu guiding guiding Ma Monica and Sayaka th through through that through this world that they've stumbled into. You know, in the ascent, not too far removed from from the from the knight and their and their squires. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But by but by essentially essentially taking that away and th and throwing and throwing them right into the middle of things, they don't ha they don't have that sa they don't have that safety net to fall back on. And there, and because. 
and because because of that, it it ends it ends up reinforcing the stakes of one. This is this is not going to be that typical setup, and two, um, this is. Fight, fighting wit fighting witches is not is not something for the faint of heart. It also establishes one of the few times in a um I would I would guess to say in a setting where you would usually assume that our main character has a slight small amount of plot armor that is going to keep them from dying. Mm. Uh, the fact that Mommy, a very experienced from the way she uh, taught uh, Madoka about hunting, which is as a magical girl, but a very experienced magical girl was so... I don't want to say easily, but it seemed pretty easy for that witch. <laughs> so easily taken out. Um, then takes away any sense of safety about the rest of the cast, including our main character. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the 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 stakes have been raised to such a point that at that at that particular um, time, and it's actually pretty early in too, mm -hmm. that you don't know what to expect from that point on. So rather than having just subverted our expectations as we said, a poisonous watchword, if there was one, that they, uh, they destroyed them. We no longer have any. We just, we're just along for the ride at that point. Exactly. Of course, then that, that gets us to places like fucking Cuba. <laughs> Do not trust the body cat. No, we shoot him. Uh, I have to argue that. They already tried that. That didn't work. Need, that's what, if a, if a gun don't work, if the gun don't work, use more gun. Uh, that's the problem. <laughs> they even even when they did kill it, they have infinite amounts of them. They just keep coming back. That's why the third movie had to have freaking uh, Homura control them because that's the only way you can stop them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I know. I just I just it's just that seeing him full of holes is my happy place. <laughs> it's, it's for a lot of people, but it didn't do shit. That's uh let's let's actually put it this way. Shooting him didn't kill him. More DACA. More of them show up, even more DACA. Eventually you get to the point the Emperor described. When the entirety and eternity of existence is filled with semi automatic weaponry, all the bullets destroying and recombining everybody. In both the Materium and the Immaterium, then and only then will you maybe have enough DACA. Um, and he, even with, or at least almost. <laughs> but actually, 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 the the gag I, the gag I was going for is ja is Jack Sparrow shooting the uh, that that skeleton monkey. It's like that won't do any good, Captain. It does me. <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. Anyway, rails, rails. Yeah, but oh, like a lot of the, a lot of the, t and we've 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 seen that we've seen this kind of thing f fairly fairly frequently of pe of of people c of um. Pe the thing is, looking. It's it's not to, it's not um. I know, I know it's, I know it can seem, cr I know it can seem cringy to say this, but I'd say, a, I'd say a lot of people, they the relationship that a fa that a fandom has with, say, with say, the subject matter that they're a fan of, is not too, is not too dissimilar from a protective parent and their child. In this, in the sen in the sense of, in the sense of wanting to see it grow, wanting to see it develop, and wanting to see it not corrupted and i re i am fully i'm fully aware of how cringy that sounds but the big but the big reason that i, t that I take th that i take that approach is because of the amount of emotional investment that is within fandom
hell, you can go further with that and because the longer a, a franchise is around, the big, the deeper that bond will grow with its fan base. Thus, the more protective they become. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, but there is there is one there is one elephant when it comes to this whole growing with or against your audience question that I that I want to I want to tackle in this, and that is Battlestar Galactica, the re, the reboot that we saw in the two thousands. Um, one would one one would think that this that because of because of how vastly different. This reboot is compared to, compared to the original, which people had been holding a flame for for decades. That it would fall into the growing against your audience kind of thing. However, I believe that it that it didn't. And the reason why I have this belief has to do with has to do with one, Ronald D. Moore was the writer. And he is, by no stretch of the imagination, a hack. And to, and two. I feel like I feel like there was a there was an awareness that that um. If that if they tr- if they tried to do the if they tried to um fo- if they tried to follow up, the st- the story that came the story that came before. Without without and without a whole lot of the people who were involved with that story because of all the tumult w- with it and the fact that that Galact that it would also mean they'd have to acknowledge Galactica 1980 and nobody wants to acknowledge that. <laughs> the smarter move would be would be to would be to utilize the utilize the themes of what came before, along but but putting a but putting a different spin on that so it as its own identity. It's like I said before, it's not about the elements, it's about the soul. It has the soul of the original, but done in a slightly different way. One that would fit better with a modern audience, and yet still feel like Galactica. It may not be perfect, but it got is it got it where it counted. Mm-hmm. Can I say something? Go ahead. Go ahead. I think what uh just what Shades just said. I, I was thinking of a franchise that embodies that so well, and I can't help but think of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah, I could see that. I mean, it's it's a it, it's a sl- it comes back one every like five years or so in a completely new form, but it always retains the same vibe and the same jive as you know the original con as the original concept in a different in a different shade sometimes in a different in a different attitude perhaps sometimes it's a little more serious sometimes it's a little more cartoony sometimes it's a little bit more avant-garde you know uh sometimes i mean but it's always it's always about you know four dudes with attitudes who just happen to be mutants and and ninjas Mm -hmm. and you know so, so it, it there's ne- let me put it this way: there has never been a bad turtle series. Um, no- I could argue that <laughs> there was one time that they broke away from the formula and it backfired hard. Guess who was involved? Oh dear, Bay. No, well, okay, two times. I'm not, I'm not counting the movies. I was only speaking of the television. Oh, no, no, I'm not counting television the movies. Shows. Actually, the movies were good. Even the third one, I thought, was a guilty pleasure. No, no, these are TV series. There was that one time Saban took a crack at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, um, I don't actually have to forget that one, but it happened. Actually, that, w- that one fits within a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about. Because, yeah. because Next Mutation very much feels like so very much feels like someone at Saban did not respect the source material and wanted to put more of the focus on the on their own creations within that setup. Hi Venus, how you doing? Um, oi, oi. I've got I've gotten a, I've gotten a few people I've gotten a few people mad when I said that when I said that Venus is a Mary Sue because some, because some people went with that whole thing of oh you just couldn't handle a female turtle. I'm like, no, I can ha- I can ha- I can handle I can handle that. I mean. Mona, even though Mona Lisa only showed up once in the in the old cartoon, she still remained a popular character, and and there's been pl- and there's been plenty of there's been plenty of um, instances with this in the comics. The problem was, I called a spade a spade. She was yeah. a, 
it was a if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, it's sure ain't a goose. And if it looks like a Mary Sue, talks like a Mary Sue, and has acted like a Mary Sue, it's a fucking Mary Sue. Hold on, I got a button for you for this one. Hey, if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck, <laughs> you're a fucking duck. Stop it! Quack fucking quack. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Pretty much. <laughs> um, it is as much as I did as much as I didn't like um Rise. It did it did eventually redeem itself. I'd say I'd say the only I'd say the only other major face plant that I can think of is the Red Sky season, mm. which is which is one which is one of which even even the people who are involved with that are are have are the mindset of let's let's pre let's pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> <clears throat> but when, but when, but whenever it whenever it do, when but I say the, I say the reason that it's able to that's able to keep showing up including including the including dot emu um bringing bringing back the um video game end of things which I which I am looking forward to seeing that is is the is the is the fact that it's one of, it's it's developed something like that has developed into a mythos onto itself. You'll you remember you'll remember that when I when I rant when I ranted about the live action Disney shit, I talked I talked about dumb things um ruining the mythos. And I used I used that particular term because as I've mentioned in the past, I um I'm a big fan of Professor Geek and he um he approaches superheroes as a kind of modern mythology. Where the story, the story will the 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 story will be the story will be consistent because for the same reason that the story of say Hercules is always is always very consistent. It is your it is that it is that mythos and that and that and that um representation of that aspect of culture in that time. The the. Some some of the some of the parameters may change, but the story and the, and thus the soul remains the same. And I th and in the case in the case of something like Superman, that's also that's also why the whole the, that whole line of oh if, oh if he if he was if, if he was born in the real world, then he would they wouldn't be such a nice guy. Or or the whole somebody with that power would would in real life be a prick. Never stick. Yeah, that's the whole reason why he was raised by the Kents. The whole idea was he they raised him to understand how what the difference between right and wrong. They raised him with that sense of nobility and, and justice, so that when he gets to that point and realizes how powerful he is, he never thinks for a minute that he could be that kind of person. He's like, no, I'm going to use this to help people because that's how I was raised. My mama didn't raise no fool. <laughs> we have an entire comic book series related to soups being raised elsewhere. It's called Superman Red Sun, and Lex Luthor, of all people, actually convinces Superman that he's a fucking monster and that he just needs to leave at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Being raised in Soviet Russia really fucked up Superman's head. Yeah, uh -huh. Go figure. <laughs> That's a different story. Yeah, but I would I would actually be I would actually be so bold as to say that a lot of the people who make that who make that kind of argument, it speaks a lot more to their character than it does to Superman. Yeah, but I'd I'd uh, I'd say I'd say that one other telling sign of someone not understanding not understanding their um audience is when they try to do the whole exploration of of given of given character as a person. Um, to you, this may be a bit of low-hanging fruit, but I'm go but I'm going to use the I'm going to use the fact that almost every episode of Rick and Morty that I don't like tries to pull that kind of thing, especially when they try and focus on Beth and Jerry, who I hate with every fiber of my being. <laughs> so what you're saying is. The Beth and Jerry episode where they try to go to ma alien marriage counseling is one of the ones you hate the most. Yes, I knew it. Because <laughs> first off, I, the only the only time I, the only time I want to see marriage the first off 
This is still a comedy with awful characters. Trying to trying to get me to relate to awful people does not and never will work. Yeah, I know. Um, there are different behind the scenes issues that go into that, especially with Dan Harmon. But we that's that that's its own kit and caboodle. We could probably do a geek watch about that at some point. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Regardless, there, there's. I, I would argue that while looking at Rick and Morty here, um, that while there were those episodes which seemed like they were growing against their audiences, uh, I know that Royland tried to keep the show with the audience, and Royland is very good at doing that. Yeah. The. The point the point is 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 that um when it comes to, when it comes to trying when it comes to trying to do when it comes to trying to do character studies like that you really shouldn't be doing that unless unless the unless you're unless you have a very tight creative group um especially <laughs> and you should really only be doing that if it's if it's already a if it's already a character exploration kind of show if you're doing an action show or you're doing a comedy, you shouldn't be doing that at all. Because all that is all that's doing is go, is going why are you tr why are you trying why are you trying to why are you trying to give why are you trying to remind me of real world shit when I come into this for an escape. Plus some um, in the plus in those sort of explorations as people kind of thing. Um a lot of a lot, maybe it's just me, but a lot of times it fe it feels like the writer inserting their own fanfic shit, which I is, mean, which is why I, which is why I count this kind of thing as grow as growing against your audience. Whereas if 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 you wanted to, if you wanted to do these sort of explorations, the smart thing to do would be to weave that into your own narrative. You know, the the kind of thing that a drama series would do. That's that's the reason why I don't ha I don't have as much issue with character exploration in s in say the better parts of The Walking Dead or um actually I'll I'll use a bet I'll use a better example with this and one that one that's a deeper cut into the Badlands which more people should see <sighs> but yeah yeah I'm I'm mad about the cliffhanger ending too and. <laughs> A good chunk of season three. My soul, my soul, monk. This it, is what, what we. This is what we in the business call a receipt. What? <laughs> you bane, what? You bane my existence. I. I hurt your soul. No, 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 no. You, you, you misunderstand, monk. I commiserate with you. I do not commiserate because of you right now. <sighs> Misery loves company. I'm glad I can keep you company. Yeah. But when but when it comes now when it comes to when it comes to the idea and I actually I actually may um that I actually, the idea of dedicating a whole episode to Rick and Morty does sound like a good idea down the road. Maybe um maybe in maybe in 2021. You mean twenty twenty two? Yeah, um, I, I guess I guess be, I guess being I guess being in I guess being in isolation for mo for months on end made made me um made, screwed screwed up my internal calendar. It's okay. We're all just in the hyperbolic time chamber. We'll come out in about two seasons, and we'll all be hit Super Saiyan four. I am not going blonde. <laughs> no, Super well, Saiyan four. That's the black haired one. Yeah, but he still loses his eyebrows. That's the point. Eh, fair enough. <laughs> I'm, not doing that. I'm not doing that either. And, uh, <laughs> for, a for a full minute, you expect me to do that for 20 episodes? <laughs> I mean, there are ways to make you shout for 20 episodes. They're not pleasant. 
I'm That's stopping the punk. you right there. I'm stopping you right there because if we go any further, you are going to get ideas, and I do not want that. <laughs> what are you talking about? Get ideas. I should already have them, Monk. Yeah. The problem. The problem is, if you go any further with that, you're going to fig you're going to think of ways to implement them. <laughs> perhaps, or perhaps they're already on the way to your location. Mm. I'll see you, Mattis. You are not, bitch. <laughs> but when it when it comes to now, when it comes to we've talked a whole lot about growing against your audience, but that's simply because a lot of the stuff when it comes to growing with your audience um, is actually is actually fairly simple, and a lot of it can come can come down to um, don't don't be a dick. You, it's amazing! It's amazing how many how many um, solutions to issues can be solved with just that. Just don't, right. Just plus you'd you'd be. It's always amazing how many times how many times I get banned from from certain people's um, accounts just because just because I say you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. See, the only reason I banned you from my account for that is because that's a factually incorrect statement. But that's a different story. Yeah. Uh oh. For as for as good for as long. First off, you never. First off, you you are technically correct with th with that, but I have to keep using I have to keep using the phrase because it keeps applying, even even if it's, it is technically incorrect. Yeah, it's it's an idiom I know, but factually, more flies go to vinegar in real life. <laughs> <laughs> which um, maybe which which may <laughs> May also may also be be a bit be a bit apropos in a diff in a completely different way. Um, yeah, they like things that are decaying, rotten, and fermented. That's not helping. <laughs> <laughs> what I, what I well, if they're if they're flies, they're 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 insignificant bugs that only like refuse. Well, so. What are we? But enough. But enough about the SAO fan base. <laughs> <laughs> nice turnaround. And I was, I was, I was gonna make a reality TV joke, but that's way too easy. <laughs> that's, that's low hanging fruit. For... That's not that, low that's hanging. It's that... rotten. No, that's no, that's that's rotting. that's fruit that's already become wine on the ground. The yeah. ants are drunk. The ants are drunk at that point. Yeah, I was then on that one. But like when it like when it comes when it comes to when it comes to doing doing a um doing a fo doing some sort of follow up um I keep I remember I remember one reviewer when it came to Revelation saying that what this what this should have done is go is go full sword and go full sword and sorcery with Masters of the Universe. Um, not le not lean full not lean into full on berserk territory, but certainly dip into it because there's always been a underpinning of of Frazetta style sword and sorcery throughout the property. I could I could actually see a really cool Masters of the Universe with He Man being a dark depressed asshole killing everybody. <laughs> I don't know if we go that far, but I could see some leanings that way. Well, no, he he said no, no full berserk, and I was thinking, he man full berserk. What does that look like? Um, <laughs> but in, but in, but I just I just think they remember seeing seeing fa seeing fan art from people like um Se like Sheptic, whose uh, whose name I unfortunately mis mispronounced, and I do and I do apologize. But look, Eastern European names are. A, are a royal pain sometimes. <laughs> um, who's and that that particular artist has 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 done has done has done plenty of work with um with a lot of top cow stuff, especially um, Witchblade and to a lesser degree the Darkness. Uh mm -hmm. And as as well as well as do, as well as doing running get as well as doing a few hilarious gags when it comes to Final Fantasy characters, like say. Why? Why Cloud is so? Why Cloud is so silent after seeing Quistus do both bad breath as a limit break and also devour? <laughs> do, you, do you mean Cloud or Squall? Squall. Squall. Why did I say Cloud? 
Um, Brit, it was a brain fart moment, but um. But now you're going to you're going to give credence to the fact that they're both blank emos, even though neither of them are. Look, the look, the I've I've seen I've seen the attempt at writing it when it comes to the people who make those kind of claims, and all, and all I have to say is um. If you if you need if you need someone to emulate, um, Spoonie is not the person you should be emulating as a writer. <laughs> what I have to say to those to those writers who try to write Cloud or Squall as blank emos is, um, if we needed projectors that big, we'd send you into space. No. Oh. Or or have you or have you work at the Omni Theater in my town? Eh. I'd rather ha turn them into projector telescopes. <laughs> that that'll work. Um, but when it com when it comes to, but even when it comes to, when it, com when it comes to that, when it com I should I should know one other gag that that was done was um, was 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 in making fun of the making fun of the summons in Final Fantasy Thirteen and going, are we sure this isn't the isn't the way to the fetish club? Especially when it comes to um, Shiva. Yeah, but what about what about Hecaton Kiris? I'm not even touching that. I don't have <laughs> enough hands for that. <laughs> it's only a high five hundred, monk. You can do it. I would rather get. I would rather get these hands than do that. You better catch these hands. <laughs> I'll put it this way: I would ra I would rather be in an ambulance getting flipped over. Does that help? Probably it does not. help. It does help a lot, but it wasn't much of a helping hand. Okay, now now I feel like punching you. <laughs> Don't get too handsy with me now. <laughs> Fuck you, man. You. <laughs> and I got the fuck you of the night. My work here is done. But you what didn't you do work? anything. You didn't do anything. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. I'm the one who said the things. Oh, you ruined the joke again, motherfucker. Of course. I've got to ruin your jokes too, Shades. Monk, I'll be happy to join you on that punching. <laughs> <laughs> we'll turn it into one of those epic anime fights. The one bad guy pun blocking the punches of the two good guys. No, 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 no. It's a, no, no. We're doing we're doing this as a we're doing this at a, as a handicap match in the Hammerstein Ballroom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, if people are going to get their asses kicked, at, le at least we can at least we can do it in style. This is true. Hey, we this make some money true. off of it too. Mm -hmm. A lot of money off. Of it. <laughs> so it Rails. Yep. Now, now when it comes and when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to that that particular idea of do of doing of doing things in that darker tone, I know I know some would some would be aghast at that, but like it like I said, there 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 have been there have been two there have been two major influences that have always been downstream from Masters of the Universe from day one. The first of, one of those is obviously um, the works of Frank Frazetta, mm -hmm. and the other one is Jack Kirby. I've heard some talk that Jack Kirby was semi-involved with the creation of the series, mm -hmm. but um, once you once you go that far back, it gets kind of hazy. Like, is it is it possible that he had a hand in certain things? Yeah, a lot of a lot of the designs feel like designs that he would come up with, especially if you look at. The, st the stuff that he was doing in Marvel and DC, like say the New Gods, like it de it would def it would certainly fit. Um, I just I just don't have any definitive proof of it, and that that's the reason wh that's the reason why I say going a going a bit sort going a bit sword and sorcery have it et have Eternia at have Eternia as a as a wa as a wasteland in the same way that Conan is a is trying to do the ancient world after Atlantis fell. Yeah, that's that's something that can actually work. Now, I I want to bring up that I'm not 
This is not something that I'm. Pl I have no plans on doing a decon a uh, reconstruction of Revelation at any t at any immediate time in the future, for a cu for a couple reasons. One, the story's not technically finished, and t and two, um, there's j there's just not enough meat on the bones. We'd end up ha we'd end up doing a wholesale purge. Yeah, we, we it, it, unlike m many of our reconstructions where we could at least keep many core elements and use them as a new foundation that we built around. Mm -hmm. um, I have a feeling that because of how contentious, intentionally contentious that Revelations is, uh, there is no other choice but to blow up and rebuild from ground zero. And if we did that, we'd just end up with a 2000X reboot. Yeah. 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 Besides, it's it's a month too early for that anyway. Mm -hmm. But when it, no, when we, it nobody to... got nobody got that joke. I um I let I let it just go right through me. Ground zero next month. It's September. Yeah. Wow, dude. Really? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Really? Hey. It's been over 15 years. That's Time still... plus tragedy equals comedy. That still feels it still feels wrong, man. <laughs> I'm going I'm going oh. to I'm going to need to take a cold shower after this, aren't I? <laughs> I didn't know it was getting you that hot, huh? monk. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Uh, uh, so many open opportunities, so little time. Jeez, and I and I thought Mike Shell was playing a man whore. <laughs> Love you, Mike. Uh, at least I at least I'm doing my job well. You're doing it too well. That's the problem. Anyway, rails again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, but now, um, when it comes to when it comes to another another thing, another thing to to keep another thing to keep in mind, and this is this is the reason why I wanted to use um Star Wars as one as one of the examples with this. Um, you guys know that I love demonstrating contrast. Yes. And because of the fact that I'm bringing that up, con contr consider consider this. There's the there's the classical there's the classical motif of the of the returning or the arriving past um be playing playing a playing a role in a playing a role in a current crisis um Tolkien used Tolkien used this thing used this thing quite a bit in in his work or or the or the notion of some of a um, long running se a long running series bringing bringing back some bringing back somebody who had who hadn't been seen for a while or um in the case of a lot of shonen anime see the idea of the idea of seeing that seeing this person who's a bit who's a big deal and then late and then later on the protagonist that you're following is on is on that same relative level yeah um the 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 idea of seeing a goal to achieve or seeing a person to emulate essentially yeah so be i will i want you to i want you to contrast in this regard the appearance of luke in the last jedi versus versus the technically deep fake appearance of him at the end of season two of the mandalorian no. I like how you, I like how you call it technically deep fake because it had to be young Luke. I will I will I will give them I will give them credit for the the ultimately the problem is always the eyes when it comes to these kind of things. It's that's just that's just one of those things that technology is not going to be able to replicate properly. It was it was certainly better done in this instance than say Tron Legacy, and I, which for the record I like. Yeah, but Tron Legacy was also an earlier movie where the where this type of technology was still nascent. Mm -hmm. Plus, the off kilter effect it gave Clue was actually much 
much appreciated. Yeah, but when it but um within but within the, within that setup you ha when with the with the idea of having of having someone whose heroic exploits are known co coming back and coming back in this regard, um. A lot, a lot of, a lot of this is in the context of, in the relative context between the two. On one, on one end, you have, you have it as the, en as the endpoint for a series of MacGuffins that, at the time, didn't make sense and still didn't make sense, which is why we didn't use it. And, in, and it's treat, and the only gravitas is, the, is um, he's back. Or at least, or at least he's been, fa he's been found. But. Whereas, whereas with whereas with the Mandalorian, that was at the end of this of this massive this massive holdout where they were completely and utterly screwed, and still tr and still trying to fight. Because first off, trying trying to br trying to break onto an Imperial ship is a dangerous gambit in and of itself. Then tr and th and then you combine that with the fact that it's ch that is chock full of dark troopers that have constantly kicked their ass. And and now they're and now they're gonna break through the place where they've where they've been held, holding out, and then Luke shows up. And it's almost a reverse Darth Vader Darth Vader moment. Pre very it's very a, much it's, so. It's a mirror. It's a mirror to Darth Vader against the rebels in, in A New Hope and such. Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 in the way they redid that thing in Rogue One, where they made it almost like a horror film. Yeah, one but, of the few good parts of a ro of Rogue One. Mm -hmm. Well, that well, the, well, Donnie Yen Donnie Yen was suffering back problems from carrying the entire movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could see that. Oh, but that and that and I I will admit I laughed my ass off at the whole thing, of yeah, put a blindfold on a guy who can't see. <laughs> um, but when, but the reason I bring up that that kind of that kind of contrast is is the latter the latter fulfilled the the ide the ideal that pe that people have of the of that hero that they grew up on coming back in some form. Mm -hmm. And that's all. That's also that's also why a lot of the people who have who keep who keep trying to justify to themselves that. The shit that they had to eat actually didn't taste like shit. Got so angry. Well, th that that and the, that and the fact that um that there's that there's that they had it in their heads that they're supposed to be better than the audience, but when so when somebody's actually giving them what the audience wants, it's they think it's oh you, oh you're capitulating or something like that, as if this is some sort of war. But. It's, but it is, it is very much, it is very much a case. I think, I think at the, I think at the core of it, the defining lines that we that could be a, that could be our capstone regarding the difference between growing with or against your audience are are. I think as I think it would be safe to say that they're as follows: one, understanding the understanding the soul of a work, which. Truth be told, is something that's not going to be easy to quant to quantify, but it is. But it is something that it is something that can be understood simply by observing. Um, nine nine tenths nine tenths of any of any work is in, is in doing research. I, and again, that's yeah. why that's why I bring up Harv Bennett in this regard. Um, yeah, I think, and if I. I can't recall his name, but what? But wasn't there a similar situation with the producer of RPM? Uh, to a sense, yeah. Obviously, I mean, he's not going to go through the, enti the entire se the entire series. <laughs> no, he he had probably watched at least a few seasons, and he felt con though uh, uh, an actual and this is an actual fact. He actually felt confident about doing like a a different take on power. What sense I he was going to. be basing his footage off of he kind of freaked the fuck out <laughs> he's like how the fuck am i supposed to adapt this i told him it's gonna make it a more serious and darker story and i gotta use this 
And yet he somehow pulled it off! I don't know how he did it, but he did it! Yeah, I don't <laughs> know how you make go on your any any amount of seriousness. And yet somehow he found a way. <laughs> At least he started to find a way. Mm -hmm. To uh to 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 quote a quote I've been quoting all day today. Life uh finds a way. <laughs> But, what? But I'd would say I'd say the I'd say the big I'd say the the question of the soul of the work is the is essentially the essentially the ans essentially the answer to a similar question. What it what is the thing that what is the thing that draws people to to it? Um, if any of you have seen my interviews, especially especially my tabletop interviews, um. You'll notice that there is all there's all I always try and start out with the sa with the same question with so, with some um with some variations like the variation that I had to that I had today with with um beloved and that that is what what is it about what is it about it that made it stick um Essentially, asking the question of, of what's the appeal, because getting it, getting into creation, getting into art is of is going to be a very per, is going to be a very personal process, and the peop and the people that care will have will have a very specific journey to it. It isn't a case where they just pick something up at a whim. Um, this is why in in say wrestling, you have a lot of people whose sto whose stories are. They gr they grew up with it in, in some form or another, and um, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to doing any sort of any sort of enthusiast work, it's a sim it's a similar affair, and I'd mm. I'd say I'd say the the understanding the soul of it is is something that is not going to be consistent, but there is going to be some kind of it factor that sticks with people. For as bad, for as bad and as nonsensical as season one Power Rangers was, there was an it factor that stuck with people. If I were, if I were to ask about what that it factor was, I would not get consistent answers from people. If I were to, if I were to say go to um, Ranger Stop or Power Morphicon and just ask around like I'm do, like I'm doing a monk version of jaywalking, I don't think I would get a consistent answer from people, and. That's by and that's by design. What I would be looking for in that instance is where the intersection happens, where the Venn, where the Venn, di where the middle on the Venn diagram is. Yeah. All signs point to here. All lines cross this point. Mm -hmm. All all roads lead to Rome. And I'd say I'd say the I'd say the other factor is. Un is under is understanding especially especially if you're coming into this from the outside that one you're standing on the so on the shoulders of giants in one form or another and two you are you are not the big swinging dick you need you need to you need to have you need to have a degree of a degree of humility because you're assen you're essentially being for lack of a better term, you're being given the keys to a kingdom, and the and that and a kingdom can fall apart very quickly if the wrong decisions are made, and that has to be re you have to respect that. Had, having the keys to the kingdom is not you sitting on the throne while the sword of Damocles is hanging over you. It 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 is it, it I'd say it's not too far removed from say. When somebody when somebody lends you the key to their car and say don't don't fuck it up, is you can do yep. a lot of things with that car, but at, but at the same time you got to take care of it. And don't um don't don't be Ferris Bueller. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's not. And. The hu the humility f the humility factor is is simply the fact that you're work you're working on something that other that other people spent a lot of work develop work, work developing and a lot of fan ba and a lot of fans spent developing into its into its own collective identity and that and be and you have to be con you have to be conscious 
of of the fact that you that you are that you are you're at your your that you are going to be putting your name in into that um that pantheon in one form or another and i i know that i know that may sound overly grandiose but it, it but if you're i'll i'll put it th i'll put it this way if i if i was ha if i was handed the keys to to say, if i was handed the keys to say do to say do a um to say do do a at do give a do another attempt at a common writer um americanization the f the first the first thing that I, the first thing that i'd be doing is first um mar marathoning marathoning a, bu a bunch of the old and new bunch of the old and new stuff two talking with people who did who already did it and three Make, making the convention rounds, you know, Q, you know, do, doing the doing the Q, doing the doing the Q and A's and all that. Not not go not talking to pressers per se, but talking to say YouTubers, streamers, the pe the people who are the people who are actually in the trenches when it comes to fandom. Getting some insight on what the, to look for. Mm-hmm. Obviously, in this kind of thing, would would it would it involve having to take my would involve having to take my lumps? Yes. But, um, any but any any time any time that you enter into a so, into a social group when you're the when you're the new guy, you got to do that anyways, and this is no different. I mean, how how many times? Shades, how many times have you seen it on the on the RVT group where somebody came, where somebody came in and act, and acted like they acted like they knew better? Thankfully for our community, not very often because when they do, they don't last very long. And they're and for good reason. Because <laughs> when you when you are when you are the new guy, you ha you. You do you do have to you do have to earn you do have to earn your spot in one way or another. And I know I know some people look at that kind of thing as as um as gatekeeping or elitism or or something like that. It certainly it certainly can up, can appear as that, but it is very much a necessary evil. And true and truth be told, whenever people throw around the term gatekeeping, I always I'm always of the attitude of. You don't know. You have no idea what actual gatekeeping is. You just need a shock word. Oh, that and the fact that there's a nice little proverb: the people who are offended by gatekeeping are those the gates are meant to keep out. Mm -hmm. And wasn't one of the imperial thoughts for the day: an open mind is like a fortress, un with it with its gates open and unguarded. Yes. But the but the the key the key thing in this is humility. Earlier we earlier we brought up um we brought up Yoshi P and everything that happened when it came to Final Fantasy 14. And even th even though they didn't go through the route that I that I just mentioned when it comes to, when it came to getting the keys what they what they did end up doing is take is taking their lumps, and in do, in doing so, um, gained a degree of public trust. So, when if it if it was announced that the, that there were, that there was going to be a significant um, update that might that might change the that might change the way the meta works with um, with FF14, I get the feeling that people would be a, would be a lot more amenable to to whatever changes happen, even if. Even if they're slight, simply because um, that pu that public trust has been built up. Actually, happened with the Stormblood expansion. Um, the people were told that with the coming Stormblood expansion after Heaven's Word, uh, there would be a massive mechanical change to how every class worked. Uh, and rather than everybody freaking the hell out and telling Square, uh, Square Enix that they're, you know, this is a bad idea, don't do it, it was looked at with a degree of cautious optimism. Mm -hmm. um, and overall, the changes were all positive. There were balance issues, as it is with any new implemented system, but those balance issues eventually got hashed out. 
Um, the new changes required, you know, new mindsets and new rotations, etc. cetera. Uh, all the minutiae that comes with a massive overhaul of that design. But overall, it improved gameplay experience for the entire player base. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that degree of public trust that they had lost with 1.x, that was partially mended with the last few patches that Yoshi P was responsible for that led to the Dalamud falling and Bahamut release uh, at the end of 1.x. Mm -hmm. And then all of the building all the way into El Realm Reborn, which completely revitalized the player base, um, was was worth it was worth its weight in gold. Which brings up my uh, I guess thought for the day. Uh, Kinski or Kinskuroi um, is an actual technique of repairing broken pottery uh, and mending like the cracks or even if a, a full piece shatters out mm -hmm. with lacquer that is also dusted or mixed it with um, a powdered metal of some sort, such as gold, silver, platinum. But it, it's also a philosophical thought. Um, it essentially treats things that are broken and repaired as something to present rather than hide. And um, it, it, this is especially in cases of trust. When trust is broken, it is much like broken uh, you know, ceramic or any other broken pottery in that it will never be the same when repaired. But with their idea, the idea is the repair builds character and also leaves the broken emotion, the broken trust, whatever it might be, stronger than it was the first time. Mm -hmm. And th this ties into, as you said, the humility. This also ties into understanding the soul of the game, being able to regain the trust. But there's a third, I think, pillar to consider. And that is that you need to listen to the people who are consuming this media, uh, whatever media it might be. Mm -hmm. Maybe that ties into humility, but not, you don't always have to be humble to listen to people. That, uh, th I think that of uh, that as more of um, conscientiousness or courtesy, that, that you pay mind to these people who have an invested interest. They are invested, whatever the media is. Yeah, in like, sorry, in its success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said before, you don't have to count out to every single thing a the fans want. There are some times where it would actually go against what you're trying to create. But if you at least are t uh, taking the notes, they'll they. will appreciate that level of respect given, given to them, and they will give it right back monetarily. Mm -hmm. And with, and I, th I, th um, as a bit of an aside, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to this whole, um, the, this whole, this whole, this whole, this whole follow, this whole following up and growing with or against, there is, there is one, and there is one entry that I'd. That I wanted to get your t your take on in term in terms of what we've been discussing, shades, because mm -hmm. it, because it is something it is something within your particular wheelhouse. Two things actually. The first one it, the first one because it because it was an, it was an attempt to try and to try and retell a classic mythos, is Common Rider the first, not the next, just the first. Aha. Uh -huh. Well. Uh, to be fair, I haven't fully watched *Commander* the first, but I know enough about it. It's a nice. It was an interesting idea. 
And I think in terms of how it was handled, in terms of the growing with or against, I'd say it leaned more towards with. Because, yeah, it was a darker, more mature take on it. But it still had the, ba- the, the base elements and the feel of rebelling against an evil organization, turning someone into a cyborg. And it had that, it just took it on a slightly darker path. So I think it handled it decently enough that I really couldn't complain about it. Mm-hmm. I, think the, I think the whole split story thing did, was kind of awkward at first, but the payoff was worth it in the end. Yeah. Um, but the, the other one that I wanted to bring up is season one of Amazons. That one works a little differently. And once again, yeah, season one. That they wanted to take try something very drastic. Having a super dark, super violent series. And but again, and it had a very different element to it. I don't really know if you could say it fits either or. Because I wouldn't really wouldn't say it fight uh, grows against. It's allowing the older fans to see a different take on Amazon. It still had, it still carried the feel of a wild animalistic kind of writer. It just added an element of science conspiracy and God knows what else to it. And I think the story of it showing like different, a whole different race being formed out of it. I thought it was a nice little twist to it. Yeah. I I was, I was going to bring up, I was going to bring up stuff like the stuff like the, Stuff like say the Devil Lady or the um or the Skull Man, but I'm not. I don't know if you. Had, I didn't know if you had seen either of those anime yet. No. Um. So, that's some. If you have, if you ever do if you ever do cover either of those, that's something to consider. But um, well, I never I never saw that I never saw the the. I never saw the dub of the Skull Man, so I, so I don't know I don't know how well that turned out. Um, but the dub of De- of De- of Devil Man Lady, um, it was it was an early two thousands ADV dub, so take so take that into account. <laughs> Is it bad that season one of Amazon's reminds me of Giver? I can kind of see it. I can certainly see it and. The reason, the reason why, the, I uh, first off, um, I did, I do remember some people say, saying that I do remember some people jo- joking that th- that that um that something like Amazon's was too violent, and I'm like, did you see the original Amazon? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it cer- Amazon certainly dialed it up, but there's a reason why the original Am- but the original Amazon was up until up until decade. The record holder for shortest um, Common Rider series, and yeah. had one of the most gruesome endings ever. Yeah, especially by 1974 standards. <laughs> but, but um, the but with if you if you really look at a lot of um a lot of Shotaro Ishinomori's work. Even even back even back in the seventies, there's always been this slight underpinning of horror and, in particular, body horror. Like I I wouldn't be surprised if he, if at one point he hung out with Cronenberg, especially during the development of Shin. Which um, <laughs> to this day I'm to this day I'm still very conflicted about Shin. Yeah, I think a lot of people are honestly. I. I think I think Shin I think Shin was I don't think Shin was a case of growing against your audience. I think it was a case of overcompensation like a lot of the a lot of the stuff in the uh, not in that era. Because of the amount of damage that Kamen no Rida had done. Oh yeah, that that's that parody fucked everything up honestly. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing. Shotaro Ishinomori like if you go all the way back to the very original Skull Man, before anything else had been, like, any other recreations or adaptations, the original Skull Man was a very dark series. It involved body mutations, human experimentations, and show and a story showing that revenge 
isn't as good as it oh, something that should be pursued. And so that's why I say the the remi the Kamen Rider the next actually didn't do half bad because it was a lot closer to something Ishinomori probably would have created if he could do something in modern times. I don't hate the next. I I just think I just think that it was spinning too many plates. Yeah. I mean, you had you had the V3 stuff, you had Ichinonji stuff going on, and then you had also had the full J horror thing going on, and and the whole and the whole thing of um and and the and the and the and the whole thing of 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 the school. Yeah. Um. And the, and again again this again it is it. What each of each of those story each of those stories that's told isn't bad. It's just try, trying to trying to compress four different stories into a film was a was a very bad idea. Cuz you're you're only going to have so you're only going to have so much time, especially especially since I think I think the next still only ran at about 2 at about 90 minutes. So you imagine all that happening in a 90 minute series. Whoo boy. Um, I remember watching the thing and feeling like I ran a marathon. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll, Rails. Put it, I'll put it that way, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the ultimate, ultimately, as long as, as long as, as long as you have the proper humil the proper um, courtesy, and and the proper understanding of of what of what you're following up on. Um, people people are people are going to be are going to be willing to accept it. And I think I think I think what's I think it's it's a bit of um a bit of a bit of time a bit of timing on my part that we're doing this this week when a few days ago um it was announced that Ble that Bleach is con is continuing in um weekly shonen going going into a, going into a whole new arc um, invo involving <laughs> hell. You know that you know that place that was brought up once. <laughs> I don't know why Tight Kubo is doing this. I get I get the feeling that um doing doing Burn the Witch, which is um which is which it, which did very much play to his strengths as as a creator, kind of kind of put kind of put the um bug back in him. And you know how you know how it is. You never you never stay retired. All, all I, it takes, all it takes, is that all it takes is that itch to come back just once, and then and then you're thinking about making a comeback. But why bleach? Why? Because it's the series that everyone knows him for, and he never did get the chance to finish it. I mean, he Maybe did because he wouldn't try to finish it. I mean, he did finish it twice. He finished it against. Aizen with the final Getsuga, and then he finished against Yuwa with the whole full circle death and strawberry final chapter. That's that's the reason why I'm going with I'm going with the approach that that I said because by the by the end of that he was just so sick of everything that had been go that had been going on and all the outside difficulties. But I do I do think that if I if I can make any comparison, it would be. It'd be not too far removed from, say, um, Leonard Nimoy's experiences in Star Trek Two, because keep in, keep in mind, at that point, he was on bad terms with Paramount and Gene. He only was involved with the first film to get a lawsuit settled, and the idea of killing off his character he was ecstatic about. But as he was as he was working on the film, he began to have second thoughts about the idea, because of how because of how much fun he was having. In the in the process of that film, and I get the feeling that working on Burn the Witch as a as a one shot and then as a three episode OVA, um, put the bug back in him. So just continue Burn the Witch. It's fantastic. It could be expanded. Apparently he apparently he has stated that he that he does plan to, um. But I, I also I also see this as a bit of as a bit of cross promotion since the since the thousand year blood war arc is getting animated. But the, the worst arc. The 
the worst stark sir i'm not i'm not going to deny that but at the very least it's giving closure to people who only saw the anime and hey it'll no doubt give shiro sagisu more more uh, opportunities to get to give me more music and that is a win okay hulk <laughs> 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 um at the, very, at the very at the very least, if I if I go full professor, it'll make sense instead of coming out something coming right the fuck out of nowhere. <laughs> but I think I think th I think that is a is as strong is as strong of a of a coda in a in a sense of audience. Now there will be a f there will be a few in there will be a few coming along coming along. This week, um, I Wyatt Ho Wyatt Holiday will be will be returning to the temple tomorrow, um, as well as well as a, as well as a few other as well as a few f familiar and less familiar fa um, faces over the week, and um, keep in and for those of you in the server, keep an eye out on the on the gates because because I'm going because this Thursday is my birthday. I'm pr I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure someone's gonna break out the Kogami button in inevitably. Yeah. And I and I will I will likely be hosting a watch party that that day. Um, don't worry don't worry it's not it's not um it's not gonna be anime I'm not I'm not dipping into your territory this this time yet Shades. <laughs> it, will, it will happen but um it'll happen on my terms. And it's, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be playing, I'm not gonna be spinning a wheel about what, about what's gonna be on the watch party. No, I'm making the pick because it's my temple. <laughs> and your I wasn't birthday. I'm gonna argue with you. Yep. But I will say, I will say that one of the, one, one of the subject matters is going to be the, is going to be the great, one of the greatest pieces of fan animation that there ever has been by one guy, and the other one is going to be the true RPG movie. I love you, Jeremy Irons, but um, facts are facts. <laughs> that... I, I I honestly think Jeremy Irons was was uh was forced into that movie against his will. So, if, so in a way of if I'm gonna if I have to act in this movie, I'm gonna act the shit out of this movie. Yeah, there's a reason he hammed it up even more than he usually does. Well, he didn't he didn't go full ham because that's Brian Blessed's job. That that's got that's that's not that's not even that's not even going to full hand. That's the whole fucking pig. Yeah. But please, but as as Yoshi P would often say, please look forward to it. And with <laughs> with, but until then, on behalf of the good brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>